Okay, let's get started with the first technical talk of the day, an overview of the Zinc Ultrascale Plus RF SOC. This presentation is organized into seven parts. We begin with the uh, introduction to RF SOC. Uh, we'll look at the key benefits and the uh, target markets for the technology. We will um, zoom out a little bit to look at a high level roadmap of the various families within the RF SOC. Uh, technology. And then we will focus on the RSOC Gen 1 parts because these are the ones that we will be using in the uh, academic board. We spend some time looking at the high speed RF uh, data converters and this gives us the ability to uh, visit the RSOC product family again and appreciate in a little bit more detail uh, the depth of the product offering. Next we'll look at the open source RSOC 2x2 project and in particular the source RSOC 2x2 project, and in particular the 2x2 board, which is being designed exclusively with academia in mind. The Zinc Ultrascale Plus RSOC is truly the world's first hardware programmable radio frequency system on chip. This slide shows the Zinc Ultrascale Plus MPSOC architecture. MPSOC features a processing subsystem with ARM processors, the A5364 bit application processors, and the ARM O5 32 bit real time processors, in addition to FPGA fabric from Xilinx, and the collection of other hard IP cores for applications like PCIe and Ethernet. This is a hugely successful architecture. Uh, RF SOC builds on MPSOC by monolithically integrating new hard blocks specifically for software defined radio and communications applications applications. These hard blocks are shown in blue on the slide. They include the RF ADCs. These are direct radio frequency analog to digital converters that sample it up to four giga samples per second with 12 bits of resolution. Uh, there are RF digital to analog converters that sample at 6.5 giga samples per second at 14 bit resolution and soft decision forward error, code error correction blocks for LDPC and turbo codes, uh, the kinds of codes that now feature in 4G and 5G mobile radio. In addition, the fabric has been extended with more DSP slices so that more baseband processing can be done in the FPGA. Integrating such very, very powerful analog mixed signal blocks in a digital device of this kind is a remarkable breakthrough. And it reflects more than a decade of research at Xilinx uh, in, to perfect this technology. This slide shows a simple block diagram for um, communications receiver. We see on the right hand side the antenna. Um, with some filtering, typically bandpass filtering, followed by a low noise amplifier with some more filtering uh, into a mixer stage uh, to mix the frequencies down. Uh, again, another low noise amplifier, some more filtering. And then we get into uh, an analog to digital converter to digitize the signal and send it over um, high speed serial links, typically to um, an FPGA for baseband processing. Now, this architecture. Uh, was now, this architecture uh, was dictated to a large degree in the early software defined radios by the performance of the analog to digital converters. The speed of the converters was such that the signals had, had to be relatively low speed in order for the software to be able to efficiently uh, convert them. This slide shows how the nature of the channel changed when high speed RF ADCs became available. With direct RF ADCs, we no longer need to mix, so we get rid of the mixer stage and the local oscillator and several other analog stages, which is a major benefit. At this point, we still need um, the CERDES channels over JSD to take um, the large amounts of data coming out of the RF ADCs and pass those to the FPGA for further processing. This slide shows how RF FPGA 
and of course the neuron processing subsystem as well. We also see how this simplifies dramatically the receiver chain. We don't require these JSD interfaces anymore between the uh, FPGA and the RF ADC because all of that is integrated inside the RF SOC. This simplifies the receive channel dramatically. And of course, this doesn't apply to a single receive channel with MIMO and beamforming and many other different kinds of multi-channel uh, uh, radio architecture today. Uh, this is very important because the benefit of oil stuff multiplies with the number of ADCs that we integrate. And of course, the same is true for the transmit channel, which we haven't shown here, but uh, there we just substitute the RF DAX for the RF ADCs, and the argument is, is the same. Current RF data converter technology will take us, if we want to operate in the millimeter range, we can, of course, deploy the zinc or a sock with external uh, mixers, uh, which is just an extension of traditional technology. So RF SOC benefits extend not just to sub-6 uh, gigahertz uh, radio systems, but right into the millimeter wave. So what we have is a single chip, highly adaptable radio platform, one that integrates the whole RF signal chain. Because we can integrate direct RF sampling, we can sample RF frequency carriers directly and gen generate RF frequency carriers directly. And all the signal processing after the ADCs and before the DACs can be done digitally. This gives us a far more flexible and programmable solution. The ADCs and before the DACs can be done digitally. This gives us a far more flexible and programmable solution. And of course, we have significantly reduced the system power requirements. And the bottom line is that higher levels of integration always win. But in this case, especially the removal of the external chip-to-chip high-speed JSD serial interfaces uh, greatly simplifies uh, the design and reduces the amount of power consumed by the system. The footprint reduction is very important because modern radio architectures like MIMO and beamforming need more and more channels. So the, um, at the very same time that the industry needs more channels, channels, we're reducing the complexity of, of the channels, uh, thereby enabling these new SDR um, concepts. And then finally, in general, removing analog components, removing any discrete components is good news. It simplifies the binds, the bomb. It reduces the complexity of the design. Uh, it makes the PCB layout uh, easier and has uh, many consequent benefits. RSOC addresses multiple markets. Um, the three main ones are wireless, wired, and uh, aerospace and defense. Wired is obvious. Um, RSOC is deployed in uh, 4G, 5G, and millimeter wave applications. Um, in aerospace and defense, it's used in applications such as uh, uh, phased array radars and also in signal intelligence or SIGINT applications. Um, maybe a, a less obvious application is, is the use of RF SOC for DOCSIS 3.1 cable modems. Um, other strong markets include um, satellite communications in both ground stations. And of course, uh, RF SOC is very useful in test and measurement applications. Uh, and is even used in LiDAR testers. So with all these applications, you can see how our SOC really does enable Xilinx's broader vision of an adaptable, intelligent world. Let's now take a first high-level uh, look at the RF SOC product roadmap. The key takeaways from this slide are that since its launch in 2018, the RSOC product family has expanded and, and continues to improve at a rapid rate. The roadmap consists of three generations of devices already, uh, with the newest uh, recently announced, announced, the RSOC DFE, which you see at the top right of the diagram. Uh, and with each generation, key performance metrics continue to improve. So that the analog bandwidth, for example, has gone from four gigahertz bandwidth, for example, has gone from four gigahertz to uh, seven point one two five gigahertz. 
while the ADC sampling rates have increased from 4 gig, 4 gig of samples per second at 12 bits to 5.9 gig samples per second at 14 bits. And at the same time, the um, digital to analog converted sampling rates have gone from 6.5 giga samples per second at 14 bits to 10 giga samples per second. And in addition to these performance improvements, we now see that we have new hardened IP blocks, such as the digital pre-distortion IP that's included in the RFSOC DFE. This slide shows the RSOC Gen 1 family, which has five devices uh, with a different mix of SD facts and data converters. Uh, you might also know two types of ADCs, uh, 2 gig a sample per second and 4 gig a sample per second RF ADCs, and we'll, and we'll explore those shortly. We can have up to eight SD facts or 16 RF converters, depending on the particular device. And the key here is that different IP combinations optimize the devices for different applications. So the, so the ZU21 Dior device in the leftmost column has no, has no data converters but eight SD effects and is targeted to wireless baseband applications. At the extreme right of the diagram, the ZU29 Dior has no SD effects but has 16 data converters, uh, both RF ADCs and RF DACs and is optimized for wireless, wireless radio and massive MIMO applications. In this tutorial, we'll focus on the highlighted RSOC Gen 1 ZU28 Dior part, uh, which we designed for academia, and because it's representative of the other parts, uh, since it contains, contains all three hard IP blocks, the DACs, the ADCs, and the SD FETs. We will begin our investigation now with the data converter blocks in the um, RSOC Gen 1 devices. We're about to get our first look at the uh, RF ADC tiles. Uh, these tiles include not just the analog to digital converters, but a lot of other very necessary and critical uh, digital signal processing blocks as well. The first tile we'll look at is the quad ADC tile, which has four RF ADCs. Uh, which can sample at 2.05 gig samples per second. I've highlighted the analog input and the ADC in this slide uh, to emphasize that there are four of these ADCs in this quad. I've highlighted the analog input and the ADC in this slide uh, to emphasize that there are four of these ADCs in this quad tile. And if we had a part, for example, that had 16 ADCs in it, it would then use four of these quad tiles. There is a second ADC tile, which is referred to as the dual ADC tile. And this has two ADCs, both of which can operate, both of which can operate at 4.096 gigasamples per second. When we look at the block diagram, we see that each of the higher speed ADCs in the dual RF ADC tile is composed of two interleaved ADCs, both of which run at two gigabits per second. For the remainder of this talk, we'll focus on the dual ADC tile with the two by four by four point zero nine six gigasamples. Uh, this is the tile that is in the RSOC two by two board that we designed for academia. We noted that the RF converted tiles um, actually contain a lot more than just ADCs. So let's investigate the complete data path from RF signal input to uh, programmable logic. And we note uh, on the diagram that the data path is from right to left. So we come in with our differential, differential RF signal. Uh, we go through the 4 gigahertz um, analog uh, buffer into our 12 bit 4 giga sample RF ADC. And we go through something called a QMC through a crossbar uh, to a complex quadrature mixer, um, and then into programmable decimation station stages, and finally over AXI4 streaming interfaces into the FPGA fabric. Now there's a lot going on here, so let's investigate these blocks in more detail. Each RF data path includes a block called a QMC, which stands for quadrature modulation correction. And the QMC block can be programmed to correct um, 
mismatches in, in the DC offset or the gain or the phase um, resulting from the use of, ex use of external IQ mixers. The crossbar block adds um, tremendous flexibility to ability to the routing of signals within an RF tile. Uh, we could, for example, be receiving a multiband signal from a single external antenna uh, with two signal bands of interest. Because of the RF SOX uh, tremendous input bandwidth and, width and, and the direct RF sampling speeds, we could capture the signal with a single ADC, um, such as ADC 23 in the top right. We could then route the same with both of our complex mixers, uh, which we're about to see in a moment, and each one could be used to down-convert a, a separate band. Here we've highlighted the final stages of our RF tiles data path. The uh, RF ADCs data path includes power-efficient down-converters, or, or DDCs, and these, these DDCs are comprised of Programmable decimators at rates of one, which essentially is bypassed, two, four, four, or eight, a numerically controlled oscillator, and a digital complex IQ mixer. And the real or IQ outputs, depending on how the mixer is configured of the DDC, are fed into the programmable fabric over multiple high speed AXI4 uh, stream data interfaces. Each tile has an on-chip phase lock loop and voltage-controlled oscillator only generated clocks. Uh, for example, on the RSOC 2x2 board, we supply a, a low jitter clock to each RF tile using external precision oscillator chips. And this clocking architecture has been optimized to support alignment between multiple converters. The RF ADC tiles are highly programmable hard IP blocks. Uh, each can be programmed over um, an AXI-like uh, configuration interface from the uh, ARM processors or from a soft controller in the programmable, in the programmable logic. And programming with tiles is supported with C drivers and Python APIs, as, as well as easy-to-use uh, GUIs. Next, we'll look briefly at the RF DAC tiles. There is only one type of RF DAC tile. Uh, and in this case, the, the data path for the RF DAC flows from the left to the right in the diagram. The complex mixers and control modules are very similar uh, to their counterparts in the, ADC, in the ADC tiles, where we would have had um, digital down converters in the ADC, we have digital up converters in the DAC, and we have uh, interpolators instead of decimators. So for these reasons, we'll not dwell uh, further on the RF DAC tile here, but we will revisit it in a later session, session uh, when we do a deeper dive on how it is used. The third class of hard IP block in the RF SOC is the SDFEC, and all modern communication systems have errors, so forward error correction is needed to ensure reliable data reception. The SDFEC is programmable and can be programmed to decode either LPDC or turbo codes. Uh, all of the common standards for 4G, 5G, and DOCSIS modems are supported, and it's possible uh, to construct custom codes as standards evolve or to do some of the common standards for 4G, 5G, and DOCSIS modems are supported, and it's possible uh, to construct custom codes as standards evolve or to do something unique. And of course, multiple multiple SDFEX are supported in single devices to handle multiple channels. As this slide shows, one of the key differentiators of the SDFEC is the amount of power that it saves by hardening this block. Another very beneficial effect is the amount of resource that you uh, save in the, in the PL fabric, which can then be used for other baseband processing. Let's take a few minutes now to zoom out a little and consider the broader RSOC portfolio. This slide shows the RSOC portfolio and the package migration options uh, between individual devices. It summarizes a lot of really useful information and so is a, a very valuable reference that's worth becoming uh, more familiar with. In the slide in light green, uh, describes the five devices in uh, RSOC Gen 1. The second column shown here describes the single RSOC Gen 2 device. 
The third column describes the six devices in the uh, Gen 3 family. The modularity of the RF converter and SD FET tiles um, allow them to be combined in different ratios to address uh, different, target uh, different target markets. Here, the first row uh, shows how different part types are suited for different markets and applications. This next group of rows describes the uh, parameters of the RF data converters of the different device types. This group of rows describes the IP in the programmable fabric. Here, the number of DSP blocks is important, especially SP blocks is important, especially to sustain high-speed data processing and streaming in the programmable logic. Another important uh, component are the number of transceivers, uh, especially for high-speed uh, data offload. The last rows show the package footprint uh, options that are available for different device types. Uh, we can see that several devices are offered in two package options and that there is um, package migration between similar members of earlier and later families to support later families to support efficient upgrading. Let's use the example of the package compatible Gen 1 ZU28 Dior with the Gen 3 ZU48 Dior to compare performance. We can see that the bandwidth of the RF ADC input buffers has increased with each 6 GHz in Gen 3. Meanwhile, the RF ADC sampling rates have increased to 5 giga samples per second uh, with a re resolution of 14 bits. At the same time, the RF DAC sampling rates have increased to 10 giga samples per second. And we now have many more decimation and interpolation options uh, supported by the DDCs and the DUCs of the RF converter tiles. We turn our, atten we turn our attention now to the RF SOC 2x2 project. This slide shows the ZCU111 evaluation kit, and the kit includes everything a designer needs to start evaluating RF SOC. It features uh, a Gen 1 ZU28DR device, and that includes eight of the um, RF ADCs, eight of the uh, RF DACs, and eight of the SDFEC uh, RF DACs, and eight of the SDFEC blocks. Many industrial and academic customers already use the ZC111 kit, but we wanted to complement it with a lower price option, especially for academia. The RSL 2x2 project includes a kit at the special price of $2,149. Um, it includes the PIC framework with JupyterLab IDE uh, for RS SOC, making a uh, board much easier to use and ideal for teaching and research. And it includes a whole slew of open source resource materials, including tutorials, um, executable notebooks, uh, and design examples. The RSOC 2x2 project includes complete end-to-end -end designs. Some of these designs you'll see in later sections of this tutorial, including this. The project has a dedicated website. All of the materials are open source and hosted on GitHub repositories. And there's an online community support forum. So here is a first glimpse of the RSOC 2x2 board. The board itself is approximately six and a half inches by five and a half inches and is considerably smaller than the ZCU111 kit. Uh, we think it will be a good choice for senior undergraduates, for project students, graduate students and researchers in areas like communications and instrumentation uh, and also disciplines like physics. This is a simplified block diagram of the RSOC 2x2 and it shows the three main subsystems of the ZCU 28 DOR that's on the board, the PS, the PL, and the RF tiles, and then the main external interfaces to each of these three blocks. External interfaces to each of these three blocks. This slide shows the uh, specs for the RF ADCs and RF DACs that are on the 2x2 board, and also the input voltage ranges for those um, converters. Here we see some of the main subsystems on the board. We have the 
RF data converters on the left. We have two banks of four gigabyte uh, DRAM, one connected to the FPGA and the other connected to the processor subsystem. We have a bank of power supplies, and then we have external clocking and um, RF tiles and PLLs specifically for the data converters. These are the main interfaces on the east and west. These are the main interfaces on the east and west of the board. Uh, the PPS input is um, a pulse per second input that um, is used for precise timekeeping and time measurement. It can uh, accept the output of uh, radio beacons such as some uh, GPS receivers, for example. We also have sync in and external clocking inputs to the um, clocking circuit so that we can uh, connect external clocks or synchronize with other um, sources. This slide has rotated the board to show the north and south um, interfaces. Most are fairly self-explanatory. Perhaps the CCG uh, STD interface is, is new to some folks. And that's a, a new um, I.O. standard, which is being proposed by Opal Kelly, a company in the U.S. It's been around for a couple of years, but it's intermediate in performance between PMODs and FMC interfaces. So we can get 24 by 225 megabits per second single-ended or 8 by 250 megabits per second differential pairs. And reference designs are available for uh, the circuits you would need to drive this from the FPGA. Some other notable features of the board are that it includes um, current and voltage monitoring on 10 of the power rails. Uh, this is done over an I squared C link and this, um, this capability has a Python interface. So there's an API that you can use and several notebook examples to show its use. There's also um, USB gadget API support. Essentially, this is um, um, having IP, the IP protocol over a USB 3 link by a micro B cable. And it means with a single yield, you can have Ethernet access to the board in addition to mass storage and, and serial device access. And all of this is possible with this one single USB 3 cable. Finally, there's an extensive set of uh, self-test notebooks for the uh, I.O. peripherals. Uh, the user can access these and, and, and run them for themselves. And there's also um, programmable RF clock jitter and phase lock loop and voltage controlled oscillator chips supplying the clocks into the um, RF tiles. And these are the same high quality uh, third party devices that are used on the ZCU 111 design. The kit itself includes the RSOC 2x2 board, a 72 watt power supply. Uh, the cables you'll need to connect the board to your um, platform of choice, two RF cables with SMA connectors, and finally a preloaded uh, seals with SMA connectors, and finally a preloaded uh, 16 gig micro SD card, which has a Linux and pink image um, on it. So in summary, the RF SOC is truly the first programmable hardware product line that is capable of offering a single chip CMOS solution for modern SDR architectures. And the key to this is the ability to monolithically integrate direct RF sampling ADCs and DACs in addition to SD effect blocks. Furthermore, the, mod the modularity of the tiles means that we can combine them in different options to create a whole family of parts, and that allows us to target the needs of different multi-channel and multi-band communications markets. The RSOC 2x2 project is a specially designed, low-cost, open-source initiative um, sources, and the whole goal of the project is to make RSOC technology affordable and accessible uh, to the academic community and their teaching and research. I hope that you found this introduction to RSOC useful. I hope that you're as excited by the technology as we are and eager to learn more. Thank you.